my name is Matt Strauss, and I would like to welcome you to the interview with Akbar Gavajabiamela. Akbar played college football at San Diego State and went undrafted in the 2003. He played with the Raiders, Chargers, and Dolphins while in the NFL. Well, let's welcome him. Why do you make it important to connect to your fans through Twitter? Uh, who was your childhood star and why? What was your uh, favorite NFL team growing up? Did you see any live NFL games growing up? If you could meet anyone in the world, alive or dead, that you haven't met before, who would it be and why? So now we're going to talk about, like, the football career. So in high school, you played basketball. And what made you decide to focus on football over basketball? What number did you wear in high school? Number 30. In college, what did you wear? NFL. You didn't switch, did you? Yeah, one number 98 my rookie year. Mm-hmm. And because uh, a veteran guy had number 94 and he was going to charge like $100,000 or something like that to buy his jersey. So I just waited my turn and waited for second year to uh, get the jersey number. Back to college football though. What was your favorite memory what what was your favorite memory at San Diego State? Okay. I don't have one bad thing to say. 
say about San Diego. What What was the most important thing you learned outside of playing football at San Diego State? That without God, there is nothing. So, um, I, I realized outside of football that it was only because of God's grace that I was able to play, that I was living, that um, I could do anything. So, I think the power of God would be the thing that I learned about the most outside of football. When, when were you expecting to get drafted, and what was your whole draft day experience like? Emotional. Um, I was expected to be a, a late rounder, uh, fell into free agency, and so, of course, I was disappointed because of you know, the whole drafting process, but um, it, it ended up working out well, though. So, and then uh, Al Davis called and said that uh, how about silver and black, and um, I said, hey, yo. As you've grown as a player, how important had film been to your development? And people say that film makes players great. Is this true? Why or why not? Well, uh, watching film is probably the most important thing because in, in the National Football League, because everybody's the same talent watch. I mean, somebody might run a little fast and a little strong, but by and large, all those guys, when you make it to pro football, have reached an elite status. And I think what separates the, the, uh, the guys from each other is the person who knows film. And watching film, it allows you to understand football. You understand tendencies. You get a beat of what the other team, what you're doing, what they're doing. Um, and so when you collectively can watch that and continue to understand the game, you, start, you can start to predict games. And the great ones like Rod Woodson and Jerry Wright, they understood. They could predict games. They could be in the game. They could see the game before it happened. And where a lot of guys try to make up for it uh, with their athleticism. And it's a known fact in the National Football League. The longer you play, the more your athleticism and your speed and all that stuff decline. And if your mental side, as far as your mental sharpness decline with that, then uh, you're, you're going to be hitting that three-year window. Uh, what have you learned from your teammates? To be good is not good enough if you dream of being great. Who's your best buddy throughout your whole football career, brother? Uh, we have just developed a friendship uh, that, that's gone uh, beyond football. It's, um, you know, oftentimes when you develop relationships in sports, sometimes it can be conditional, meaning that as long as you're on the team, I'm cool with you. Uh, but as soon as you're done, uh, then that's it. And that's just the, that's the culture and the nature of sports because, you know, players come in and out. And uh, so for some people... It tends to be a little colder to relationships just because you're going to be cool with somebody and then folks might get you traded, cut, or injured, out for you, and then you never see them again. And so I think uh, our relationship has, uh, has passed through those thresholds, and uh, it, it's just a genuine relationship. What's your best memory with Nomni? Uh, our football experience and uh, just traveling the world. We've uh, traveled, uh, I think, uh, 15, 16 countries, something like that. In 2005, you spent the year out of football. What did you do, and what was that whole uh, experience like? Uh, that, that was a stressful year out of football because I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, but it was in that year, that moment, that I realized that uh, if I got an opportunity to play football again, um, I would start to position myself for my ultimate dream, which was to, uh, after football, was to, to broadcast. And so I spent 2005 spending a ton of money because I didn't have any other income coming in. Uh, but at the end of that, I realized that when this world is over, that was the first time that I realized I, was, I could be cut, um, that I was going to have a, a focus. And the reason why most athletes are broke after is because they don't have a plan of what they want to do because it's all football, 24-7. So in that year, I spent time figuring out what it was I wanted to do for the rest of my life uh, post-football. Facebook or Twitter account? If so, go to twitter.com slash interviews or facebook.com slash interviews and follow me there. What is it like to have your brother play in the NFL? Oh, it's exciting. It's exciting to watch him play. Um, I, I grew uh, a tremendous amount of uh, inspiration to watch him play, to know somebody who achieved I mean, the absolute greatness. I talked about my infatuation with Freight Man State and looking up to athlete stars like Magic Johnson, uh, of course, Pop Sensation, Michael Jackson, and, and Muhammad Ali. And you take those guys and then you put it right in your own in your own house to see somebody who's a product of our, of our family to go out and to achieve greatness beyond my wildest dream to see him do it on Monday Night Football, to see him you know, make his first touchdown on Monday night, 
like to, to play against him on a Monday night game with Brett Farm, um, you know, just destroyed him. You know, those things were all so cool. I think that he retired early, um, but I wouldn't say early. A 10-year career is pretty decent, but uh, he still had a lot more left in him. I uh, would love to have seen him uh, play, you know, at least three or four more years, but he decided that he wanted to retire. So, but uh, playing with him at San Diego State was great. Playing against him in the pros, uh, once with the Chargers, once with the Raiders, was an excellent experience. You, there's nothing that will ever, you know, uh, take those moments from me. I, I'll, I'll remember that forever. Did you ever get a nickname throughout your career? And- yeah, you know what? My nickname, my, my nickname kind of spawned from the fact that Madden, John Madden gave my brother the name KGB, which was fitting because it's the Russian CIA. So all the coaches and all the players, when I got into the uh, NFL, just start calling me AGB. So AGB is the only one that ever stuck. I never had a nickname that stuck because my name is just two syllables off bar. So AGB is what kind of stuck. Do you have a favorite charity? Favorite charity would probably be Orphans and Widows and Aids. is actually part of the Asimov Foundation. And, uh, and Orleans Foundation stands for Orphan Widows in Need. And uh, I'm a board member now on that uh on that foundation and just it's taking care of those uh, who don't have less. You know, the Bible, you know, commands us to take care of the, the orphans and, and the widows uh, that are out there in the world. And so um, it's just a tremendous thing they have going as far as looking out to uh, the orphans and widows in Nigeria and in all other uh, parts of the, of the continent of Africa. What's the best thing that has ever happened to you? What is your favorite quote? Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. What does that mean to you, though? Actually, hope in a major in communications for college. Like, why did you choose communications? If you could describe yourself as any ice cream flavor, what would you be and why? Thank <laughs> you. 
Memphis has never been too sweet. It's just wide enough. It's just, it's just enough. It gives you just enough punch uh, to make an impact. And, uh, and I don't think I'm the most impactful person uh, in the world, but I think I have just enough to make an impact in a person's life, uh, my kid's life, my wife's life, um, you know, kids that I, I come in contact with, uh, people that uh, I speak with, you know, people that I, I, I broadcast to. Enough, just enough to make an impact to make the world. What's it like talking at the Rookie Symposium? It feels good to know that you can make an impact on rookies who you may or may not ever see again. I've gone down and I've spoken to guys like Reggie Bush. who come up from the air. I remember when he spoke to me now. I'll never forget that. Um, and this year was kind of a special to do this year at the symposium because my son had a chance to sit in and uh, watch me speak to, to 300 plus rookies. So that was good. For someone who wants to play football in the NFL, what's the best advice for them? Uh, <laughs> for someone who wants to, arguing to somebody who wanted to play in the NFL, I would tell them to come up with a second plan. <laughs> that would be my advice to them. Okay. And I say that because having a second plan outside of football, if they only have to have it for three years, but having a second plan allows them to appreciate it a lot longer because oftentimes you can get so trapped and wrapped up in just football that you forget everything else and when football eventually like it will for everybody stops it can become a sour experience if you're not ready for uh, life after football so I would say have a focus on something else A gives you a better appreciation uh, of the game that you're playing knowing that it won't last forever B when it does then you'll have a, a, a game plan is there anything you want to tell any fans throughout your career mm-hmm. that I haven't asked or talked about? If I could tell, if I could tell like, all my fans one thing, I would tell my fans that God is real. That's what I tell them. God is real. God is good. Um, that's it. Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening to the interview with Akbar Gabajabiamela. In addition to the audio interview, there are also personal questions that he answered below. Do you think you have anything in common with him personally? If so, scroll down below to read his answers. Thanks again for listening.